welcome to the building and painting series. In this series, we'll be going through the whole process of building, painting and weathering a full model. We start this series with the new Mengs ZDZ96 version B. The Type 96 is a distant descendant of the Soviet T-54. With the help of the USSR, China has copied and developed the Type 59, then the Type 6979, after the Type 8088 and eventually the Type 90. The Type 96 is a transitional second-third generation main battle tank. It has replaced completely all the previous types. The tank has a 125mm smooth bore gun, weights 48 tons fully loaded. It has a top speed of 65 km per hour and a 400 km range. It has several types of armor like explosive reactive armor, composites and modular protections. Before we start, let's see what's inside the box. On sprue E, we have the two parts gun, armor for the turret and chassis, and the rear part of the main hull, among other details. The sprue H holds mainly the different types of side armor and small details. On the D sprue, we can find most of the turret parts. have four sprue A. These mainly hold the running gear, the wheels and parts of the trucks. We also have two sprue B. These also hold parts of the wheels, full drums and small details. The chassis comes in two plastic parts that fit perfectly. We can also find some polycaps for the wheels. Here is the upper part of the turret with two vinyl manglets options. Sprue F is for the clear parts of the periscope and sprue G for the Commander MG. We have a C sprue for additional side fenders options. See the vinyl tracks and some steel roads for the workable suspension. We can find a small sheet of photo edge parts along with the water slide decals. To finish, we have the black and white instruction sheet and the color profile with the five different options. For this project, we will be using the Chinese book from AK. There is a dedicated part for this tank with info and lots of profiles. Although, we will be focusing only on the B version. Specifically, on the unit used on the August 2016 tank biathlon with the Snow Digital Camouflage. Let's start with the build. Although it's going to be several videos about the build, we are going to follow the instruction sheets, so there is no way of getting lost. On step one, we will be building the idler wheels, road wheels and dry sprocket. It's the most relaxing part of the model. All three sub-assemblies are quite easy to get done with.
for the dry sprocket, we had to use some putty, although the expulsion marks are barely visible after the assembly. When the putty is dry, we just have to sand it down a little bit. We can also use a knife. Remember to apply some pressure after gluing the parts to ensure the plastic melt together correctly. On the step 2, we are going to build the torsion bars of the model. We have three different kinds of torsion bars with different small pieces. Men call them A, B and C. The A torsion bars are the easiest ones. We use some super glue for gluing the steel rod to the A25 plastic part. Then, we just put together the parts, make some pressure and apply plastic glue. B and C are quite different from A, so let's see B. First, we use super glue to glue the steel rod to the A17 part. Then, we have to put together three small pieces that are going to be movable. So, take care when you apply the glue. Now, we have to snap together the three main parts and apply glue only where indicated. We have to repeat the process with C bars. On the step 3, we will be joining all the torsion bars to the chassis and gluing them with the supports. Again, take your time with the order of the torsion bars, as not all of them are the same and there is a specific order for each side of the model. We just have to insert the steel rod through the chassis and then insert the end of the rod to the plastic pin. recommend to use some super glue to make it stronger. Then use A6 part to fix the torsion bar and apply some glue. Step 4 is for the lower hole parts. Once more, we have several options depending on which of the 5 finish options we are doing. In this case, we are doing the option C, so there is no need to modify any part.
On the step 5, we will attach the return rollers, the tow handles and the supports for the idler wheels. We only have to click together the two parts of the two handles, put them in place and apply some plastic glue. For the return rollers, we first have to glue the roller to the supports, and then glue them on the chassis. On the step 6, we only have to put all the wheels in place. We can do that without gluing them thanks to the poly cap. That will make the paint of the wheels much easier. In this first volume, we have seen so far the history of the subject, then an inbox review of the men's kit and the first steps of the assembly. In volumes 2 and 3, we will go through the rest of the assembly and then we'll move to the painting in the successive volumes. That's all for now. Stay tuned and happy modeling!